Happy New Year, sister friends. A couple minutes late trying to get my gazebo situated because we have it all closed off and then it looked like I was coming to you from a tent somewhere in the country. So, um, cheers, bring it in. I am excited for what 2022 has to offer us because it is locked and loaded with promises and fresh starts. And I'm not a New Year's resolution kind of person, but I absolutely love the fresh start of a new year and all the things and possibilities that are held in it for us, for us to go after, for us to dream about, for us to set goals in. And don't set ourselves up for failure, but set ourselves up to have a purpose, a vision, a dream, and a goal. And I think that is so important that we have that in front of us, that we, Amber says it all the time, the way you leave one year is how you enter another year. And I just really love that because I am leaving, we left 2021 joyfully and um, full of hope and we're entering 2022 locked and loaded with hope. So I'm just gonna pray and I'm gonna dive into the word that I have that the Lord's given me. So just agree with me, just open your heart for what is, um, stirring inside of me and I hope you have ears to hear it. Lord Jesus, I just submit this time to you, God. I ask, Father, that you anoint my words for your purpose. Lord, let this human vessel bring your heavenly instruction. I ask, Lord Jesus, that as we prepare to take our steps into the new year, Lord, that we operate in a in a heart of expectation expectancy and Lord that we live in a place of grace and hope that this year brings to us another level that we have layers upon layers upon layers of insight revelation and an open heart and ear towards what you're speaking Lord we dedicate this time to you and I ask Lord God that each sister now hearing this and tuning in later father finds something to cling to for the next year lord that you impart to them a thread of of hope and instruction and something that looks different to them in jesus name amen uh, marla val lisa let's go here we go let me know where you're tuning in from so i am calling this the 2022 a triple threat of grace. That is what the Lord has given me to declare over 2022. And when I start thinking about what a triple threat is, I think about um, movies and the way movies have higher actors who are a triple threat. And what that means is that they actually can sing, dance, and act. And when you have a triple threat that is coming to you on the screens, you can throw anything at them and they can do it. You can surprise them with a dance, you can give them a song and they can sing it, and then you give them a role and they can play it. And when somebody can't perform, they have to get a substitute. They have to get somebody to sing in the background for them. And sometimes we can really pretend well what, what um, mouthing somebody else's songs. We can pretend well, but you know what you can't pretend? You can't pretend to be a dancer. That is that that is just something, unless you're on the jib jab videos that, that make up the dances for you. You there's just some things we can't pretend. We actually have to do them. And so a triple threat of grace means we are going to walk, live, and perform the word of God in our lives across the board. There are no substitutes in this. There are no backup plans when it comes to grace, grace, grace. Grace is the backup plan. Grace is the song, the dance, and it is the performance that we are bringing to this world. So I'm gonna read to you what God has downloaded into me and then I'm gonna impart it to you guys. And I ask that you seize this word because here's what God has given me. For the past few months, I've seen a series of numbers. It was in a weight, the price, and in time. When I asked the Lord what he wanted to show me with the numbers 555, five, five, his answer was grace, grace, grace. As I meditated on this word, I knew the number five represented grace, but the Lord was showing me that he was wanting to lavish us times three. I love that. And he wanted us to live in this grace 
in a triple threat towards this world. He shared three steps of grace for me to operate from, and I feel that this is the impartation for our GGG page. And what a cool thing that we are great grace and girlfriends, and our word over GGG actually is GGG. Grace, grace, grace. And I found it strange that the Lord gave me the word three times, but you're going to see why he didn't just want to bring it to us and just say live from grace. Because he said, I want you to live in grace. I want you to live from grace. And I want you to live to give grace. So what that means is living in grace means you're resisting shame and re recognizing the dependency that we have on King Jesus, what he has done for us. It's by grace that we are saved. Living from grace is active and intentional. It means we rise up every morning recognizing the gifts, recognizing the gift we have. It's knowing pain has an end and grace wins always, always, always. Living to give grace. And this is the step forward that we need to come into 2022 in a powerful and dynamic way. Living to give grace. It's first done by offering grace to ourselves. That's a hard one. I can often give grace to somebody else before I give it to myself. But we are to love others as we love ourselves. And so first, let's start offering grace to ourselves in our faults, our failures, our past, our disappointments, things that just didn't go as planned last year. We need to give ourselves grace to try again this year. We can't be afraid to hope again. I feel like somebody needs to grab that one more time. You can't be afraid to hope again. Last year disappointed you. Last year, somebody is saying, yeah, last, last year was a shite fest for me. But the Lord is saying, don't be afraid to hope again this year. Do not be afraid to give yourself grace again this year. Maybe it was a crap fest last year, but this year you have fertilizer to, for days to sow seeds in. So let's seize that. We can offer, when we pour grace out on ourselves generously, we get to offer it to other people in their dark moments. We can, we can see those pit dwellers dwelling at the bottom of the sea like in Little Mermaid. We understand that because at some point in our life, we were those little shells of people just sucking carpet and vaporized for a moment by life and, and, and hurt and heartache. Living to give grace is more than forgiveness and acceptance. Living to give grace. We live to give grace. It's offering favor that's not deserved. It's not making somebody earn your friendship or your respect or your attention. It's not making somebody have to do a song and a dance for you. It just means, you know what? I'm going to buy you a coffee. I'm, I'm going to buy you a coffee because you're standing behind me. It means that I'm going to give a gift because I want to give a gift. It has nothing to do with anything but but pouring out favor on somebody who's surprised by it. And I, I'm coming to that word here. It's seeing the broken and then acting upon it with our compassion, with a layer upon layer of grace. This year, I sense the Lord pouring out a triple portion of his unmerited favor. I see him wanting to bring us to a broader space of grace. He wants to open our minds to the fullness of grace. It's not just something that we know we live and have because we've sinned. It is an action. Grace is an action. He, he is wanting to increase our capacity to live it and give it. The picture that I have in my mind when I hear the word grace, grace, grace is I just see arms opening up. The arms just expanding and expanding and expanding even more so. Here's why, because we're inviting and beckoning and we're calling people into the arms of grace. We are calling for that sinner to come home. We're seeing shattered sisters who need a shoulder. We're pulling our bootstraps up and we're deciding to walk out our purpose after failed attempts and broken dreams. Grace, and I love this, is parfaiting us in sweet layers and levels to live from and in. It's equipping us to give it, to give grace. Grace is equipping us to give grace to the difficult and to the offensive. <laughs> that was snow falling off the roof. So <laughs> we'll keep going. 
It's imparting a kindness to offer a listening ear and an unoff unoffended heart. Listen to this. Great grace meets at the table to break bread with those who disagree with us or even have betrayed us. I'm going to read that again. Grace meets at the table to break bread with those who we might disagree with and even have betrayed us. It's confident and comfortable in its own skin. And it has nothing to prove, only offer and operate from. That's what grace does. We are stepping into a season of unmerited and undeserving attention grabbing grace. It's not just going to be subtle. There is going to be a moment. There's going to be a time when you actually operate in grace and it grabs the attention of heaven, but it's going to grab the attention of earth. It's going to grab the attention of a soul who was so hungry for it and you offered it at the right time. You are going to represent grace, a heavenly attention grabbing grace that is foreign, that we have never felt or heard. I feel like it's a foreign grace that we are going to be living in and from and giving. It's another level. I hope you're receiving this. We are going in to a foreign level of grace that we have never, ever operated in. And we are letting our guard down. Can somebody say that? I'm gonna let my guard down. I'm gonna let my guard down and I'm gonna live freely in this attention grabbing grace. You see what was once out of our reach is being slid across the table for us again. What was once impassable or unapproachable is now open and it's receiving you. They're receiving you. God is having somebody already prepare to open the door for you. He's already putting, your name is being mentioned in rooms right now. Grace is falling on you. You offer grace and so grace and watch it come back to you in a place you never expected it. A, a door that opened that you, you gave up on long ago. What was once unrepairable is now mendable. This is what this, un, this is an unimaginable, un, incomprehensible grace that we've never experienced. This is a foreign grace to us, but this is how God works and grows, layer upon layer, line upon line, precept upon precept. We are rising out of the ashes of grief, sorrow, and loss with a fire in our bellies and in our hearts to set the world ablaze with this new grace. We are stepping into grace-filled shoes to trample divisiveness, anger, and discord. The head of the serpent is being stomped on by the Debras of today. Are you a Debra? Are you a woman not only on a mission to obey and speak the voice of God, but also a Debra makes room for another woman to win? Can somebody grab a hold of that? Debra makes another makes space for another woman to step into her place and she steps aside and says, this is your victory. I'm gonna step aside and let you drive the nail through the enemy's head. This is your time to shine. That's what a Deborah does. She doesn't just lead. She doesn't just do what she needs to do for her, but a Deborah does what she needs to do for the sisters that she's leading and walking and running life with. We are here. We are here to roar grace over our families, friends, neighbors, cities, states, and our beloved country. Ladies, it's time to lace up. It's time to tread on evil with a holy and attractive, unimaginable, new and a foreign grace that we've never experienced before. This is the scriptures that the Lord gave me, and I'm going to read them to you coming first from 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But God's amazing grace has made me who I am. All his grace to me was not fruitless. In fact, I worked harder than all the rest, yet not in my own strength, but God's for his empowering grace is poured out upon me. And then our declaration for the month of January is going to come from Isaiah 55. The verse, I, I won't read the whole thing because I don't want to gobble up your entire afternoon. But here's what Isaiah 55, 5 says. And if you're a person called to nations, if you're a person called to bring impact to your country, to your city, to your state, to your family, to your neighbors, listen up. Surely you will summon nations you know not 
and nations you do not know will come running to you. Can you just put in a promise from God right there? Surely we will summon women we don't know about, that these women who do not know us will come running to our page. Women who have no idea what is out there will come searching and seeking this the voice that is coming out of GGG. We know this because we are come running to you because the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel has endowed you with splendor. Amen. Amen. I, I encourage you, read Isaiah, listen to Isaiah 55. This is what we're going to be studying throughout all of January is the incredible, powerful words that, that come out of it. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. If any of you have no money, come take choice wine or milk. It's all free. Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me. You will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest foods. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. See how I used him to display my pow power among the people. I made him a leader among the nations. You also will command nations you do not know and peoples unknown to you will come running to obey because I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you glorious. Let me pray over you. Um, if any of my team wants to hop in right now um, and have a, if you have a prophetic word, something you want to bring to the table, um, I, I invite you to just go ahead and request to be brought in. Cindy, Lisa, Amber, anybody out there, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up in prayer unless you guys have something you'd like to um, speak over our ladies, you're invited to do so. And I'll give you a couple of minutes, but let me know, let me know in the chat if this resonates with you, is this something that you are ready to seize for the year? Are you ready to have a foreign grace that you've never, you have had known grace, but this is a different type of grace. Are you ready to walk in that, receive it? Are you ready to give it? Are you ready to live it? Hallelujah. You just read Isaiah 55 yesterday. Wow, the scripture Isaiah 55, five has been put on my heart. I'm reading this Beverly because I love that. I've seen people from Guatemala and England reach out to me during the past few months. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we'll take that, won't we? Here we go, bring them on camera. Who is, who is wanting to come in and be part of our, um, I'm gonna bring Lisa. Renee is watching. Hi, Renee. I hope you are receiving this. I'm bringing Lisa on. I think there's Cindy I can bring on. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, add you. Here we go. Oh, let's see here. All right. Let's see if that works. All right, Lisa, are you are you available? I'm not sure if you are or not. I tried to bring you on, Cindy, but I, I don't see you there. So um, I'm going to close in prayer. Lisa, I'm not sure if you're catching this or not, but we are going to wrap this up in prayer, ladies. I just speak blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Lord Jesus, we receive this word. Father, we ask that you saturate, marinate, and Lord, I like the word even parfait us in grace. Grace upon grace upon grace. Lord, a foreign new level impartation of a heavenly grace that is still it's a creative grace. I feel like you are just giving us a creative grace, a way to enter 2022 and bring unity where there was discord. We're going to bring a, an, a foreign um, eye-catching grace to a world that has been divided, separated, and been played against. Lord, we are going to come in and grace is going to be the glue. Grace is going to be not just glue, super glue. It's going to be gorilla glue. It's going to be that glue, Father, that begins to bind up and, and repair shattered relationships. It's going to repair grace upon grace upon grace is coming in and restoring areas and relationships, families. Lord Jesus, friendships and churches are going to start operating in another level of grace and they're going to extend it. Where they were once judging and pointing a finger, they are going to have arms wide open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I bless my sisters today and I ask, Father, right now that as they enter into this new year, that they, are, they have lips lined with grace, that they live in it, they live from it, and they live to give it 
in Jesus mighty 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 name amen I love you ladies let me know if this ministers to you I ask that um, if it does just keep inviting your friends we have a page that is growing beyond our capacity and another exciting thing that we're going to be doing this year is we're going to be inviting our members to write for us we're going to give you opportunity to present a devotion and we will give you a theme and then we are going to give you opportunity for those who are just itching and aching to be a voice and have a story to tell um, we're going to have you submit a devotion to us and we are going to publish it on our page on in our blog so um just something fun that we get to offer you guys and hear your voice as well anyways i love you all heaps and heaps and heaps and bring on 2022 because it is gonna be good Mwah. love you